Today I want to talk about what the return of Justin Ross means for Clemson. All that's coming up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You gotta help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up kid folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time today. I want to talk about, well, Justin Ross, who is going to return to Clemson if he clears some medical hurdles. Now, that's a caveat, but many of you know he missed the 2020 season due to a spinal condition that he needed surgery for. But before that, this was one of the most explosive wide receivers in all of college football. Had over 1,000 yards receiving in one season. Had 66 catches for like 865 in 2019. But like the 2018 like last three games of the season were where Justin Ross really came and showed us who he is, particularly against Notre Dame in the Cotton Bowl and then Alabama and that 44-16 to win for Clemson. Getting him back is tremendous for DJ Uwe Angulale, who is going to have to find another go-to receiver. Cornell Powell came through and actually did a really great job for them in a, in a year where he didn't have Joseph Nada, right? in a year where Travis Etienne also needed to be one of your top pass catchers. And now, with the return of Justin Ross, you have that deep threat back. But it's not as if DJ Uwe Angulale has not been great. As a matter of fact, check it. The man went 59 of 85 against Notre Dame and Boston College in his only two starts. Passed for 781 yards, at 390.5 per game. 9.19 yards per attempt, which is better than Trevor Lawrence uh, over the course of a career. Four touchdown passes, zero interceptions. And I think with Ross coming back, you have a guy that can take the top off the defense with one of the most talented football players in all the country. And I mean that. DJ Uwe Ungle is tooly as hell. Six foot four, 250 pounds, cannon for an arm, throws a 95 mile an hour fastball, and will be one of the guys that we're looking at who could win the Heisman Trophy. He's that good. Justin Ross is good enough to win the Bolitnikoff Award, and that's one of the reasons why I'm very excited about what this offense could be. It's also in a period of transition where you're going to have Lynn J. Dixon, who may get the bulk of the carries, but getting Will Shipley on the campus is going to be big for them as well. And then your defense is probably going to be the strength of this Clemson team in 2021 as they return, I believe, all 11 of starters on that squad with Brian Brzee and Miles Murphy in the middle holding it down for you. And then you get James Skalski back at middle linebacker. This is really cool because Georgia and Clemson start off against each other, right? And you're also going to see JT Daniels, not just with George Pickens and Kiaris Jackson and Jermaine Burton, but also Dominique Blaylock, who I think a lot of people forgot about. You also are going to get James Cook back in that backfield to go along with Zamir White and Kendall Milton, and Kenny McIntosh, and on it goes, to say nothing of Dejan Edwards. So getting Ross back makes that game that much more fun and gives us that much more to look for because both teams can lose that game and still make the college football playoff. One, because we all think that they're that good, and when it comes to the selection process, it's about who you think is good, not necessarily what their, what their schedule says they are. But I expect both of those teams to debut as top five teams in every poll, coaches, AP, and in any other place you want to look that you take seriously. But the other part about this that is very interesting to me is who is going to benefit from Justin Ross's return at Clemson other than DJ Uwe Ungle And I think it might be a guy like EJ Williams, right? Who is enormous and huge and massive, but also is a dude that can 100% Take your defense apart in the same way that T. Higgins was able to take defenses apart. And that was an aspect of their offense that they really missed in 2020 was just having that sort of dude that was bigger and stronger than everybody else at six foot three, about 200 pounds, getting bigger. He's also from Phoenix City, which is the same city that Justin Ross is from. And that was one of the things that I really wanted to point to entering 2021. 24 catches for 306 yards with two touchdowns. That's across 396 snaps. That's pretty doggone good. And was really emerging down the stretch as one of those guys that they could depend on to go get them important possession catches. Like we have left this era of the possession receiver and we have gone straight to this space of 
taking the tops off the defenses and outrunning people. And when you got quarterbacks with cannons for arms like that of Ui Ungalale, you can see why you want to load up and you just want to go down the field at people, especially if they're going to come out to you in man coverage. Like that was also a thing that I was really interested to see in the Sugar Bowl that Clemson just didn't have an answer for. I thought that they might be able to take apart Ohio State in man coverage, and they weren't able to do it just because they didn't have the horses on the outside. And Ohio State sold out to stop the run, and that ended up being what it is. And now with, with Clemson, you really have a running game problem, so much so that Dabo Sweeney is making some changes to his staff. He is going to elevate C.J. Spiller to running backs coach, move Tony Elliott to coaching tight ends, right? And I believe Drew Perriman is going to go to an off-the-field role as they bring in uh, another special teams coach. So there's a lot that needs to be done at Clemson for them to get back to the playoff, but they're certainly in a position to do that. And that is what I'm paying attention to. Are you willing to make the sacrifices and the changes that are necessary to try to get you not just back to the playoff, but also get you in this position to win another national championship as you're going to rely heavily on Brent Venables and that defense? I think Getting Justin Ross back makes your offense a little bit more explosive, and it's probably going to need to be to start the season, and then you get basically nobody until the ACC championship game, where I expect for a North Carolina to be there to challenge Clemson at the end. All right, that is it for me. Just.